Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about something that anybody who likes dividend stocks should know and they should look for before buying a dividend stock. So, um, first, you can buy a dividend stock, and that stock may have a nice dividend yield, but you think that you're going to be accepting that big yield dividend for a while, and then all of a sudden it stops. I'm going to show you how you can know or be prepared for that happening before even picking the stocks. So first we're going to go to a site called macrotrends.net. Macrotrends is a website that gives you a lot of the financial data that you're going to need about a company to evaluate it because we know when you're buying stocks, you're just buying shares of a company. So you should know about that company, whether it's fundamentally strong and so forth. So you go to macrotrends.net. Once you go there, you can type in the ticker symbol for that stock. And we're going to use MetaFast as an example. MetaFast is a stock with a 9 point something percent dividend yield. So this is a great example. And when you type in the ticker symbol for that stock, you could choose income statement. It's going to bring you to a page where you can see income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. You want to choose the cash flow statement. Now, at the cash flow statement, there are a few things to look at. And I go through this process myself. I'm going to show you. So what you see here highlighted in yellow. One thing you're looking for on the cash flow statement is cash flow from operating activities, right? Underneath that, you'll see net change in property, plants, and equipment. If there's a minus symbol next to that net change, you want to subtract the net change from the cash flow from operating activities. Now, one thing I should let you know about macro trends is that everything, if you're looking at a few of these, for example, under 2022, we see 194.57. If there's a period, there's always six digits after the period. If there's not a period, as add six zeros. And if there is a period, it's six digits after the period. So this 194.57 would be 194.57000. Would be and that's how you're going to do the calculations because these are all in millions. And underneath it's 16.681. That would be 16.681.000. In other words, 16,680,000. Um, 16, so that's how you're going to calculate that. So now that we've covered the cash flow from operating activities, and we've subtracted the net change, that is going to give us the, um, that is going to give us the free cash flow. So now let's go to, I'm going to go to the next screen where the um, dates are cut off, but you still see cash flow from operating activity net change in property, land, and equipment. But also, at the bottom of this page, highlighted here as well, you see minus, because the minus is showing you that this is something that's being subtracted from the money the company has. It's money that the company is paying out. 
the when you're just seeing the straight number, it's money the company is bringing in. But if you're seeing the minus, that's money the company is paying out. And the company also pays out a dividend. And this shows you how much of a dividend, this shows you how much of a dividend they paid out. In 2018, they paid out 23 million. 160,000 in 2019 35 million 396,000 in 2020 53 million 190,000 in 2020 um one 63 million 856,000 and in 2022 71 million 620,000. So, why are those numbers significant? And I'm going to show you now. Now, for me, I do this on a spreadsheet to make this all simpler for me. I don't have to sit around doing all of these calculations. I just put the numbers into the spreadsheet and it does all the calculating for me. But if we look at 2018, here we had 60,816,000, subtracted 4,744,000. That gives us free cash flow of 56,072,000. The next year, cash flow from operating activities. 84,261,000 net change what what the expenses the company paid 10,058,000 what was the free cash flow 74,203,000 now why is it important for us to know what the free cash flow is for these companies that's important because The company pays you your dividend from the free cash flow. So if they don't have enough free cash flow to pay you your dividend, then that dividend is going to have to end soon. So if we look at the example here with Metafast, we see in 2018, after they they started with $56 million in free cash flow, after they pay you your dividends, or after they paid out the dividends for that year, they still have $32 million, $32,912,000. 2019, they still had $38,807,000. 2020, they still had $86,119,000. 2021, they still, well, actually in 2021, their free cash flow was 60336000 but it's not showing on, on here because it's above on the spreadsheet. The dividends that they paid out that year exceeded the free cash flow. So when we come down to free cash flow after dividends, it was minus 3,520,000, meaning that year they probably had to borrow money just to pay the dividend. But the next year they made up for it. Free cash flow of 177,889,000. And after paying the dividend, they still had 106 million two hundred and. 69,000, right? So when you have a company that's paying a dividend, especially if they're paying a dividend that's increasing every year, one thing you want to see is that they have enough free cash flow to be paying those dividends. The other thing you want to see is that if it's a dividend that's increasing every year, you want to see their cash flow, their free cash flow increasing every year. 
because that will ensure you that they can continue to pay increased dividends. If their cash flow isn't increasing, but the dividend is increasing, you know that there's a limitation. Also, if their free cash flow is decreasing every year, you know that they can't continue to pay you larger dividends. They may not even be able to continue to pay you any dividend for a long time. It's not a stock that you can hold long term. So these are some things that you want to consider. I, I know people love these high dividend stocks. Um, I preferably would prefer a company that's growing in value over a company that's not really growing much in value, but they give a, a big dividend. With a, uh, um, if you go to results of this week's stock winners, which I just put out for November through December, I could show you stocks that I picked out in this week's stock winners in early November. And then by the time it came to the end of December, the stock had grown to over 20%. Where at, and that's in a period of two months, as opposed to a stock that gives a good dividend, even if I'm getting a 9% dividend yield on that stock. What does that matter if I'm getting 9% in a year compared to 20 some percent in two months? But, and I'll do a video on that at some time in the channel, but for those who love those dividends, I'm showing you something that you can look at to make sure that this isn't a company that's offering you a high dividend yield just to get you to buy their stock, but their company really can't afford to give you the dividend that they're giving you. So in any event, every week I put out this week's stock winners. It shows you fundamentally sound stocks that are moving up from their annual low price and gives you the information as so that you know things you could take advantage of. Um, it, we also show you when those companies are coming up ex dividend, meaning you have to own them before this specific date to be able to get the dividends and so forth. We um, rate them with our star system, letting you know whether we consider them our most fundamentally sound below that or the bottom tier, but still fundamentally sound. So please subscribe to the channel. Keep an eye on the This Week Stock Winners that comes out every week to let you know it, what opportunities you can take advantage of in the market. We also just started, or I should say I also just started, This Week's option picks where from week to week I will be picking an option or following an option and then not just that I will be getting the option I will be buying the option so that you guys can take a look and see how it's actually progressing and for those who are interested in knowing more about options we have a couple of um a couple of videos in the channel one is the swing traders toolkit which lets you know a little about how you can get options ability set up in your brokerage account if you don't have it and we have a video that explains what are call options and what are put options so you may want to look at those and lastly breaking financial news generally if there's something that i see going on with the stocks on our watch list or with the market overall whether it's after hours before hours or during trading hours 
I will send out a breaking financial news to let you know what things I'm noticing. So in any event, guys, if you're interested in investing and you're not subscribed to the channel, I'd suggest that you subscribe to the channel so that you can take advantage of all of this valuable information. And um, please like this video. If you have any comments, please drop your comments. You can um, say how you feel about the things I spoke about in this video. Um, you can ask questions, whatever you want to do. But please drop your comments and um, let me know what your feelings are about this subject. In any event, have a great day, and I will speak to you in the next video.